The episode begins in King's Landing, and this is where Daenerys brings the Unsullied and Dothraki just in case Cersei has a trap set for her. She places her armies right outside of King's Landing's doors, and this is where Jaime and Braun are overseeing King's Landing's defenses, and they see all of Danny's armies outside of King's Landing's doors, and they admire it. Tyrion and the others take a ship and they arrive at King's Landing, and once they are docked, Tyrion, Jon, Daenerys, Jorah, Davos, Theon, the Hound who has the white in a cage, as well as Daenerys' Dothraki blood riders are awaited by Braun when they arrive. Brienne and the Hound see each other and Brienne is amazed that the Hound is somehow alive. They talk about Arya and the Hound asks Brienne if she should be the one who's protecting her. Brienne says that the only person needing protecting is the one who gets in Arya's way. The Hound smiles and he says he doesn't plan on being the one to do that. Another reunion is with Tyrion and Podrick, and Podrick still admires Tyrion and loves him, and he even says to him that Tyrion is still his lord. While Tyrion is there, he looks around the dragon pit thinking it could be a trap. Cersei arrives with Kyburn, Euron, and the Mountain. There is no Clegane Bowl in this episode, but the Mountain and the Hound do see each other, and the Hound gives him a look that says, one day I will finish you off. The Hound brings in the cage with the captured white to the middle of the dragon pit. Cersei asks Tyrion where Daenerys is, which is when Daenerys arrives on top of Drogon with Rhaegal flying at her side. Everyone is amazed by this, even Cersei and Euron. But then Cersei wonders where the third dragon is. But the person who is most amazed is Euron by Drogon's arrival. Theon and Euron also have a reunion at the dragon pit and Euron challenges Theon by asking him if he's ever gonna do anything about his sister Yara. Theon says he will touch on that later. Jon then tries to explain that the Great Other is real and they need to unite to come out victorious. Cersei doesn't believe Jon, but the Hound opens the White's cage and the White comes out like a wild beast running towards Cersei, but the Hound also has him chained up so he can't reach her. Cersei is surprised by this and she's afraid. And this is when the Hound starts to demonstrate how a white cannot be killed by just chopping it up bit by bit, since it continues to move even when the Hound cuts it up. Jon yells out that there are only two ways to kill a white. First is with fire, so they set fire to one of the white's arms, and the arm stops moving and the white displays pain. The second is with dragonglass, and Jon uses some to stab the white, and that's when the white dies. This is when we hear Jon's speech from the trailer about the Great War. Euron pretends to be afraid, and Euron asks how many of these creatures are there, to which Jon says hundreds of thousands. Euron asks Jon if they can swim, and Jon says no. So that's when Euron says, well, I'm gonna go back to Pike, and that's when he leaves. Cersei and Daenerys see the danger together, but Cersei says once the long night is over, she must still be queen, and she offers Jon to be the Warden of the North. But Jon then swears an oath to Danny in front of everyone. Jon says he can only serve one queen and his queen is Daenerys Targaryen. Cersei is very surprised that a northern savage has said something like this. Cersei is pissed off and she leaves and she's unwilling to collaborate because she is not going to be bending the knee to Daenerys. Brienne tries to convince Jaime to change Cersei's mind. Jaime says he admires her loyalty to the Starks but Brienne says fuck loyalty, it's about survival. Jamie has seen all this and he believes the long night and he says he's going to do his best. Now that Tyrion, Jon, and Daenerys have seen Cersei's negative response, it might mean that they won't have the support of the southern armies as support in the north. Tyrion heads to the Red Keep with the mountain right behind him. Tyrion and Cersei have a conversation about how she blames him for all of the things that the Lannisters have gone through. She talks about how he killed their mother and father, and Tyrion said there was nothing he could do. Tywin wanted him dead, so he killed him instead. Then Tyrion says, if I'm so evil, why don't you order the mountain to kill me? Cersei doesn't give the command. Tyrion notices Cersei isn't drinking any wine, so he knows she must be pregnant, and she doesn't deny this. Tyrion and Cersei walk out to meet the rest of the people that are in the dragon pit, and Cersei tells them that after speaking with Tyrion, she will send troops to the north to help against the others. Tyrion and Daenerys talk about how Daenerys told Jon she can't have any children how the dragons are her only children, but Jon doesn't care if she can have any children. Up in Winterfell, Sansa and Littlefinger have a discussion. Littlefinger tells Sansa that Arya is very dangerous. Why would she choose to come back to Winterfell now? What will Arya do with the letter? This is all part of Littlefinger's plan to split the sisters apart. Daenerys and her group leave the dragon pit and they go back to the war room on Dragonstone. 
They talk about organizing their defenses, and since Jorah is good at strategies, he tells them that they need to use their forces for a defensive strategy when the dead come south. Theon and Jon speak about the Starks and the Greyjoys and how it used to be when they grew up together. Jon asks Theon if he's going to come north with them, but Theon says no because he must rescue his sister Yara first. Now that Theon knows Yara is still alive since Euron challenged him, Theon tries to rally the rest of the Ironborn that's on Dragonstone to help him rescue Yara, but he ends up getting in a fight with one of the men. Theon is getting beat up pretty badly, but the man tries to kick Theon in the balls and it does nothing, and that's when Theon's able to get the upper hand and win. After the fight, Theon takes a small rescue group with him off of Dragonstone and they head out for Yara. Back in Winterfell, Sansa gathers all the Northern Lords and all the Vale leaders. Sansa calls Arya to come forward and Arya thinks this might be her last day alive. Sansa says it's time to judge the great treacheries and betrayals that have been done to the North and that they're going to judge the person who is responsible. Sansa looks straight at Arya and she actually can't believe that Sansa is about to do this. But Sansa then repeats herself but this time she looks right at Littlefinger. Sansa then starts to list off everything he has done. She talks about Littlefinger killing Liza Aaron. She also pulls out the dagger and asks him if he recognized the dagger that he said belonged to Tyrion, but they knew was his. Bran is next to Sansa, and he's actually the one who told her all of this. And she tells everyone that Littlefinger sold her off to the Boltons. And this is when Littlefinger realizes he is screwed. He tries to lie his way out of it, and he even asks Lord Royce for some help. But he realizes there is going to be no way out of this. And this is when Sansa thanks him for all of the lessons that he has taught her. And this is when Arya comes up from behind him, and she slices his throat. Back in King's Landing, Jaime and Cersei have a conversation about the upcoming war. Jaime doesn't know that Cersei has no intention of helping him yet. Jaime starts looking at the map on the floor because he wants to prepare the Lannisters' army to go north and help, but this is when Cersei asks him what he's doing. Jaime tells her he's getting ready to head north, but Cersei tells him no, they're not going to be helping them. Cersei tells Jaime that she has obtained an agreement with Euron when he pretended to be a coward and he said he was going to go back to Pike. Euron is actually going to Essos to hire the Golden Company to help her defeat Daenerys. Jaime is disgusted by this and they continue to argue, and the Mountain actually draws his sword in case things get ugly between the two. Jaime is so angry he actually leaves and the Mountain lets him through. He is seen leaving King's Landing on his own, heading north on a horse. We see Jamie leaving the city, and on his way out, he stops to fix his golden hand. And this is when he looks back at the Red Keep, and this is when the first snowflakes begin to fall on King's Landing. Back in Winterfell, Bran is visited by Sam, who he recognized from when Sam helped him get north of the Wall. Bran asks Sam what he's doing there, and Sam said he needs to speak with Jon. And Bran says he also needs to tell Jon some things. Sam asks Bran what he needs to tell Jon, and Bran says that Jon isn't Ned's bastard, but he is Lyanna and Rhaegar's son. He says that he was born in Dorne, and his name isn't Jon Snow either, his name is actually Jon Sand. Sam tells Bran he actually isn't a Sand either. He has seen the record about Rhaegar's annulment with Elia, and his new marriage with Lyanna. Sam says that if Bran can see into the past, he should go and see for himself, which Bran does. He sees the wedding with Rhaegar and Lyanna in a forest, and Bran realizes Robert's rebellion was all based on a lie because Robert was angry and thought Lyanna was kidnapped and raped. While Bran is having this flashback, it goes back and forth between his flashback and Jon and Daenerys on the boat heading north. Jon and Daenerys enter a cabin together on the boat, and they begin to take off each other's clothes and have epic boat sex. Tyrion is the only one who notices they are having sex, and while the romance starts to intensify, we flash back to the Tower of Joy scene, where Lyanna tells Ned that her baby's name is Aegon Targaryen. Bran then says Aegon Targaryen is the legitimate heir to the Iron Throne. Arya and Sansa finally make up and reconcile. Arya tells Sansa that she's the strongest woman she has ever met, and Sansa tells her that she could have never achieved the things that Arya has. The last scene is at the Wall. We see the events through the eyes of Bran while he is warged into a bunch of crows. It's at Eastwatch where Tormund and Beric are at. We see the army of the dead with the blizzard following them. Tormund and Beric are shocked as they see this, and out of nowhere the Night King flies in on Viserion. Viserion starts to do flybys attacking the wall with a blue flame. It starts to focus on one part of the wall that starts melting. The wall starts to break apart into a V-shape which leaves the wall open to the Great Other. And this is when the episode ends with the Night King flying right through the wall on Viserion. 
All right, folks, that's everything I have for the finale. I know there is a lot to take in here, considering this episode will be the longest episode in Game of Thrones history. It should be right around 80 minutes long, but there is a massive revelation in this. The wedding between Rhaegar and Lyanna is huge. Jon Snow could potentially be the legitimate heir to the Iron Throne, and his real name might actually be Aegon Targaryen. That's pretty damn crazy. Also, Jon and Danny having sex may lead to something pretty important later. They keep saying Daenerys can't have any kids, but I'm 100% confident she will get pregnant by Jon. Like I said before, Miri Mazdur told Daenerys that only death can pay for life. And I think since Viserion died, that will be sort of like a payment for life. And it's going to allow Daenerys to get pregnant once again. I could be wrong about that, but it feels like they're going to go in this direction with all the foreshadowing they are doing with Jon and Daenerys. Let me know what you think, though. Based off this, do you think the finale is going to be good or bad? I'm wondering how all of you feel. I want to thank you all for stopping by to watch the video. I really do appreciate that. And I also want to thank all my Patreon supporters. I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.